Hello. Hello. Welcome. My name is Liesl. And we are doing the Sweet Dreams painting. And I have here my paint palette, which is kind of mixing together, but we have white, black, bright yellow, um, phthalo blue and bright red, which the red is the non-orange kind because you don't, unless you want to make a bunch of oranges, but we're mostly making pinks and purples. So you want uh, <clears throat> colors that are more on the primary color side. So they're not leaning towards an orange kind or anything like that. And of course I have my brushes on the side too. So <clears throat> there's a few brushes that you can use. You can use like a large, it's, not, it's if it's soft, it kind of works pretty well. I have a large flat one. You can also use a large round or mop brush if it's easier. And then my other options, this detailed brush, uh, any detailed brush is good. So you can use a number two, number four, this is a number four brush, but you can use something much more tiny to get the tinier details of the, the stars and the moon. And um, you can also have smaller medium brushes. So like a smaller version of the flat brush or a round brush. So this is about a number four, or this is a number four and number six for the round. I'm mostly gonna be using my largest brush here. And I mean, any of the, in the small one too, but any of these ones are good. I'm going to eh, probably use, it depends on what I feel like using, but one of these two. Okay, so I think we'll get started. I have a water cup, some paper towel on the side. And we're gonna get started with Mostly our background and just kind of putting where we want our clouds to sit. So with the large one, dip that in the water. Just dab it a bit more dry. I don't want it to be overly wet for this. I kind of want more of a dry brush. <clears throat> and I like to start with just a plain blue. So a scoop of that. Put that in from the top. And we can just do more solid strokes back and forth. This is our first coat and usually the first coat is <clears throat> the most transparent. And if you use too much water, it gets really, really light and very transparent. I'm starting from the top here. And then, you know, as I go down, so we can start putting in around the top. I'm going to just make just really small. Don't go too big because then you have to make, you have to make them really big. Just really small. Um, you know, when you were in grade school, you just make these clouds that are very indented like that. Yeah, something like that. So you know where your clouds are going to sit. And you can shape them later, but it, it just takes care of having to fill it all in and then on top waiting it, waiting for it to fully dry. When you have it mostly um, in some of the spots not filled in, you can just work with it and shape it to more of your liking. So I have, we have some asymmetry here. We want to just go a little bit more down and not up here. We want to go a little bit lower and put in just a small section of another cloud coming in. Something right here. And then of course at the bottom, we have a little bit more. <clears throat> There's lots of clouds down here, so I don't even need to fill in pretty much everywhere down here. I went a little bit lower than I wanted to just to have some of my background filled in. So I don't need to fill any of this in. A 
Okay, so here's what I want to do. Fill this in, just a touch of water. We don't want, again, too much water on our brush at all. Just taking plain blue for now. Mostly go back and forth, no white spots. And sometimes you can just change the direction because overall I'm trying to get it more of a, I'm not trying to make it so streaky. So when it dries, <clears throat> when I put my second coat, it usually takes care of that. I'm just using plain blue. And when I get about halfway, you can go a little bit lighter. So this is about halfway down my canvas right here. Then what I do, take some blue to the side, take a little bit of white. Don't You don't need to overdo it. So you get more of a sky blue, just a little bit of a lighter sky blue. And you can go as light as you want. If you want to go super light, you can. And just fill that in. Start from the bottom and then work your way up into the darker blue to help it blend. So you're just doing it right away. And right over top of all of this stuff. I don't mind if I go into the clouds. Okay, so the more I go over it, the more it just blends together. And you just work your way up, there we go. Get some consistent strokes there. Then I'm just going to wash this off. If you have a blow dryer, you can always just blow dry so things are drying a lot faster. You don't have to wait as long, very convenient. I am drying this on a napkin because I want to squeeze out the extra water. Okay, so it dries pretty fast. <clears throat> but we can get a base coat going for um, a little bit in here and then shape it more to our liking while we're waiting for this to dry. Any brush that you want to use to fill it in is fine. You can even you can use something like this or something smaller, like this smaller round one. The thing is, is that I'm going, I'm not going to fully shape my clouds just yet. I want to get my second coat out here, but I can get a base coat, just something really small. And then, um, after I do my background for my second coat, I'm just going to go over again the lines to get to how I want to overlapping my sky. So in terms of color, whatever color that you like and prefer, you can do more on the pink or more on the purple side. And <clears throat> it's a very kind of fluffy textured look. It's good to start off a bit more in between the light and the darker color. So more of a pinkish color is good. And if you have a light magenta or just a magenta color, you can use that as your base. But otherwise, you can take a little pea size of red and scoop a little scoop of white. I'm going to take a little bit, another pea size of red. And I basically have a light magenta here, hot pink. And you can add the tiniest, tiniest little dot of light blue, and that will give it that just extra pink, almost towards the purple side, but it looks pink. Starting from the side, I'm just gonna dab. I'm not gonna go right to the very edge because it's gonna go lighter on the edges anyway. So I'm just gonna go in here. Lightly dabbed, okay, take a bit more. Not adding water on my brush unless it's absolutely dry and you need to. Dab here, kind of swiping it, doing 
sort of like comma strokes as I do it and dabbing, just a little bit of both. I mean, these ones are attached together, so I'm just going to continue it. If I have to make a bit more, that's okay. And I don't have to get the exact same color each time. Here we have another cloud coming in that's going to basically attach to this one. Still, I'm not going as high as I need to at the moment. More white, two dips of red, two pea sizes of red, or depending on how much of a hot pink you want. And the tiniest dot of light blue that we used before is all you really need. all the way around the sides and the bottoms get that coverage in okay so there's another decent base coat for another color and then i wash that off again so just remember you can pause and take your time throughout this video so if you need to work a bit slower or dry things and you know, something like that, you can do that. You can always skip ahead to other things if you're really fast. And <clears throat> so I do wanna go and put in my second coat up here, it's pretty dry. Second coat's gonna make it a bit deeper, but here's something that I like to do. I like to add in a touch of red to my blue to give it a dark indigo at the top. You'll see it changes the deepness of the blue, and then I'll just go over my light blue towards the bottom. It's going to look blue, very much blue. So blue, and then just take pea size. You can take, you know, a good pea size of red, and when you mix it in with a big scoop of your blue, it looks more like a midnight blue. See, and it actually looks closer to the black side, which it's not. You'll see when you put it on too. It's just a deeper, kind of more ultramarine blue. So I go. There, look at how dark that is. So I have my base coat, this is on top, and now I have a midnight color. So I'm just going, if it's still very wet, it's not gonna work too well. It's probably gonna pull off paint. I'm gonna take another big scoop, and then just put as much as you want for your midnight color. Some amount of paint again, fill it in. Back and forth. And then after a while, it's not really too necessary to keep this color going for too long. We do want to get a little bit lighter. You can just take at this point plain blue, the same plain yellow blue that you had before. Just keep using that. It's going to get slightly lighter. You can wash off your brush and take plain blue if you have a lot of that darker blue still sitting on your brush, tainting everything. And I'm going right up to these clouds. You don't need to work around them carefully. The clouds are getting bigger, so it's gonna overlap still. The clouds are gonna overlap the background. Okay, now I'm about halfway again. Just go a little bit below halfway. Use up the rest of my paint back and forth. And then go back. You can wash this off if you're afraid to touch anything with any red. You don't want it to be too purpley. Wash it off, dry it really well. And then go back to your lighter blue. So your sky blue. So equal parts white and blue, or is light, or you can go lighter. Start down here again. I like to just lightly 
do shorter strokes and dab down by the clouds. I don't need to worry about it being such smooth lines. With the second coat, it really hides underneath or on top of that first initial coat. It's not as obvious with the streaks when it dries. It's more of a solid look. And then work your way up so that when you get less paint, it's easier to blend and it just kind of smooths out and then stop at a certain point that you're happy at stopping. Right about here seems good to me. Maybe I'll go a little bit more with some light blue. Depends on preference. Can, if you went a little bit too much, just go back to any color. You don't really need to wash off this brush. It will just blend very nicely. It's good that way. Okay. And that should mostly do it. For the second one in the background, so it's going to dry and it's going to, I think, come together a little bit more nicely. You're not going to see as much of the streaks. I'm just drying off my brush again after I washed it. More of a dry brush the entire time. So ways that you can, just a little tip before we move on, ways that you can smooth things out is if you just very lightly with like a no water on your brush, more of a dry brush here, you can lightly dab around any spots, some spots. Uh, to smooth it out. You can pick up any extra paint that's a little too streaky and give it a softer look. And this is with your larger brush, anything soft. So you have a large flat brush or something like this mop brush, you can kind of smooth out things. Make sure it's pretty dry. If it's wet, it's going to leave a lot of streaks and marks and pick up your paint. Or you can even just do a third coat to give it a deeper color. Or just go over it again just to get out anything. Wait for it to fully dry, very important. Yeah, in just a minute, we're going to work on the clouds. So I do recommend letting it dry. I want it to fully dry. And then when I put more details on my clouds, I'm not picking up wet blue and making a bunch of purple when I want it light around here. So I'm going to come back and just blow dry this really quick. So we'll start again in about um, like two minutes.
Okay, so that is basically dry. And now that it's dry, we can do a bit of some of the, not the actual big stars in the moon just yet, but I splatter some stars so that um, if it's hitting anything here, we can pick it up with our paint and just, you know, get rid of it. So uh, doing stars after you do clouds, not as fun because then you get stars in here and you have to clean it up. So in terms of brushes, whatever brush that you want to use, the smaller the brush, the smaller the little dots and splatter it will be. So if you use a detailed one, it gets really, really speckly. I'm going to use like, you know, just a medium round, I think is fine. Water it down. So fully submerge it into your water and then pick up a little bit of white. So dunk in the water, pick up a little bit of the white. So it's kind of drippy and then just let it go. You can control it a bit more. You can have less in certain areas, more in certain areas. Maybe I'll do a bit more up here in the darkness. There. So it's really just that simple. And then after that, you can use the back handle of your smaller brush. Just dunk it into your white on the back side. And then you can dot some bigger stars. Or use a big brush, use the handle and use some, if I do a bigger one with this one, I can just put one like right here and get some different sizes. Make constellations in the sky, have fun with it. And these ones that I make, I'm going to turn into bigger stars later, or you can just add them as new stars later on. So you can be like, oh, I want this one to be there, and I want that one to be like right here. So that's totally up to you how you want to go about this. And then I just very kind of fast with a little bit of paint on the brush. I just lightly tap to get more fill in, some really small stars, but slightly bigger than some of my speckles that I've made. That's my first layer of stars, the bigger ones in the moon. Wait for, we're gonna do this at the end so that when we're done the clouds, we can put in the moon and put in some bigger stars over top of ones that we've already dedicated for it or add in new ones and we're not smudging things around by accident. Um, one thing about the moon is, yes, you can you can do any kind of moon you want. This is more of like, a, I guess, a sliver of a moon, but you can do with the back of, um, like a cap. You can use a cap and trace around it. That's really small, but you can use a bigger one or a small cup and just trace around three fourths of it and you can get a perfect circle. And then, you know, you have that open area. So something to think about and, and grab towards the end or whenever you have time. Now back into our clouds, let's just build onto it. So just looking about, just looking at the layering, uh, generally you want to you want to get more of your pink. It's mostly pink. You want to get more of that deeper pinky purple kind of magenta over here from the side. And then we're going to use a lighter color. So more white. Um, I like to use a bit of a, a peach color, which we'll, we'll use to make this more fluffy and rounded around the edges, brings it out a bit more and then blends into the pink and softens it in between. And the darker purple and the bluish color is on top afterwards. So back to my big brush, or you can use something smaller, right? If you have a smaller canvas, you probably want to use something like this. And yes, you can still get away with using this brush. It actually does a really good job. I'll show you with this one in a bit. Second coat, right? You can see first coat, not as great. Second coat, 
red. Actually, let's just add it right in here. I had it here before. Why not? Red, mostly red, just a little bit of white. So I have a hot pink. Then the tiny, remember that tiny little dot of light blue or the dark blue? See that? Um, this is really going to taint it. If you take too much, you're just, you're going to be like, ah, oh, it's like purple. It's supposed to, in here, it looks very more, much more on the pink side. So let's stick with the dabs. I'm going to think fluffy. Use the side of your brush if you're using something like this. You're dabbing like on the side. You can also do like this, but it, I think it's harsher. I think this is better when you're dabbing like that. And I'm not going to the very edge this time. I want to fill in right where it starts, right here. Right there, and then just leave, see that? You can still see that underneath layer. It's a little bit lighter on the edge. Perfect, it's already starting a bit of a softer look. And then let's go to, so let that dry. Just, it's gonna be damp. So think strategically here. If this is, by the time you're finished, you know, somewhere over here and you're like, oh, this is almost dry. We're gonna bounce back to here and just add in, while it's still slightly damp, our lighter colors. Okay, in here, not using water on my brush. Like if I do, it's the tiniest touch. Otherwise it doesn't stick very well. You'll know when you have water, too much water on your brush. Okay, so down here we have those layers. Just getting all the very bottom because I want it all filled in. It's all quite dark down there anyways, so I may as well. And then we'll figure out the layers afterwards. So I just want to get up to the spot again. And you know what? If you want to go a little bit higher, so if you're like, okay, I want my clouds to come up even higher, which I do, I'm going to imagine that I have a layer. Okay, so I have a layer here, so maybe I'll have another layer above it. I'm going to raise it up just a little bit more. Okay, perfect. So I'm not going to wash this off. This is still wet. Actually, yes, I am. Sorry, I am washing this off. I'm, I'm not washing it off if I'm going to purple, but since we're doing the lighter color, we need to. Let's use up the extra water. Dry it in, into a napkin pretty well. Okay. And I'll show you that light peachy. You can do, this is where you can have fun. You can do like an orangey color. You can do a lighter pink instead. Um, let's take, so actually into, so white with, into some of this color with a tiny little dot of red, tiny little dot of red, super light pink as you can see. And then a tiny little dot of yellow. Now I have a light creamy peach. So you can always add a dot more of each color depending on how much darker you want it to be. Nice. <clears throat> so this is a lot of paint on my brush. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to wipe it off mostly onto a napkin. You can always revert back and lightly grab a little bit more. So now it's very lightly coated. Let's just test it out. If I just very gently, without too much, see how it's not too much paint, like that, and just blur all of that line. Let's go closer. Now it's starting to make it nice and round, very fluffy. I'm just using the full width of the brush. And now you can shape more to your liking. So I'm just mimicking the shape for the most part, but then, you know, bring it out a little bit more here and there if you want more of that. Okay. 
And all I'm doing is just working my way in very lightly, streaking it, dabbing a bit, letting this color lightly sit on top for now. So if this is not dark enough for you in color, just add a little bit more to it. So will take a little, maybe two dots or three dots of yellow and two dots of red. And you can get more of a slightly darker color. And you can just go right around the edges, shape it a bit more to your liking. So right here, I didn't go all the way to the bottom because I have another cloud that's just going to see, overlap. I want that to overlap. If you're using more of a flat brush, let me just show you that, dry brush, use the full width of it, and just keep rounding your streaks. Let's go around, short little lines, mimicking the shape. Let's grab a bit more paint at a time. I'm starting to get towards, as you can see, I'm mostly towards the bottom, and I'll show you how you start layering. Just work your way into through the middle. Let it lightly overlap. Let it mix with some of that color. I think it gives it a bit more movement overall. Less of a very flat look. It has looks like there's a bunch of layers overall onto on the clouds. So stick with the brush that you like, or switch between sizes as you get into bigger or smaller areas. Just adding another dot of yellow and red and some white again as I run out of color. So very lightly coated. Wipe it off. If it's if it's got too much paint, you'll know because it comes off very blotchy and just like this thick layer. You want a thin layer or press super, super light. Down here. I'm starting on the top layer. That's what I want to start with as I get from up here and before I work my way down, starting on the top layer, just putting in shapes that, so it's not all the same height too. Let's make sure some of it's a little bit higher. Just give it some variety. So down here, lower. Very low. And then layering. I want to leave, so I have my next layer. This is where I want my next, the top of it. Just overlapping. First of all, I just want to very lightly dab into here. And maybe I'll just bring that down. I have a cloud just coming in on the side. Then I have another cloud. Right around here. There. So it's not like I have a second parallel line. I just stops somewhere around here and I have emptiness over here. I didn't wash off the brush. Any little touch-ups that you need to do with your, I didn't wash it off. So that is something to keep in mind when you're doing a second, or technically a third coat, but if you want to do touch-ups, wipe off a little of the extra paint again. And then lightly dab wherever you need to. Uh, just to hide, it's mostly to hide any Streaks that are a bit too much for you. If you want to, if you made your cloud a little bit bigger, maybe you want to bring it in a little bit more closer to the edge now to follow that shape. It's going to really give it a bit of a boost, I think. Lightly dab. So I'm using the flat side, not like this. Right here. And then right 
here I have went up a little bit higher, so I'm just going to introduce that. Just in here above this cloud, coming up a little bit higher, and it softens it a bit more. It's like you're giving it a bit more of a blend. Okay, so that is the start of her clouds. Take a step back, see if anything looks a bit rigid to you. And I just mean by something looks a bit too square, too uncloud like you know, just a bit too sharp looking and then just round it out a bit more give it more fluffy look and make it more rounded that's all okay so now i'm washing off this brush again and i think it's very helpful to let it dry in between um, some of the layers when you add wet paint on top of wet paint we know it's not the greatest it can pull it off so it, if it's a bit damp, it can be okay. So let's just, I'm gonna blow dry this for like 30 seconds. It's okay if it's a bit damp. And then we're gonna introduce a bit of some deeper purple, like down the bottom here. And a little bit more of like white to overlay some of the peach, or you can do more peach if you wanna put a bit more. Maybe you're lacking peach, you're like, I don't see any peach here. You can put in a little bit more. But I'm gonna be mostly using uh, the, the purple and some of the white. So I'm just going to touch up a little bit on that peach I was going for up here. I just want to see a little bit more of that. Okay, 30 seconds. Okay, so it's uh, mostly dry, slightly damp here and there, but I'm okay with it. Now let's add in a bit of some darker purples, give it some more contrast on the clouds. Kind of almost stormy. So once again, I'm making sure my brush is mostly dry, squeezed out extra water if it's in there. You can use a premixed purple. So this is a mauve pale. And I mean, if you want to use that, you can. I am going to just make my own purple. Mixing on top of here really does work and help. And more red. This is how much blue you really need. Make a little kind of comparison. And then you get purple. So if I add a little touch of white, don't overdo it. We're trying to keep it dark. And you can go more purpley if needed. So maybe I'll add one more dot of blue. And it just starts, you know, really turning more and more purple. And it's quite, let's just start with this. Wipe off a little bit extra paint just in case if it's, you know, really going to wipe off a little bit more. And then just from the sides, lightly dab. 
see how you like the color. If it's too purple, too blue, you can just drown it out with a bit more red. If it's too dark, you know, add more, a little bit more white. Lightly tap. Too much paint, you'll get a big blob. So try to do less paint. Lightly tap here from the edges. Work your way out just a smidge. Kind of like shaped like a heart here. It's fun. And then right here, wipe off a little extra. What helps too, you can use your finger or a dry kind of clean brush. You can pick up the extra see, if I just lightly tap with nothing on it, no water, nothing. Or use your finger to swirl it out. You can just kind of lightly press and pick up the extra paint. Now it's softer. Circle it, going like this, circles. Usually what a blending brush does. Okay. So got some darkness down here, darkness over here. And I can circle that. And the good thing is you can go back to a bit of a lighter pink. If it's if it's too purpley and it took over, just go back into a bit of a lighter pink and start working your way in. And it's just point purple again. Okay, so purple again. So I have some here. And don't worry, we're going to get a little bit darker. And then mix a little bit more of my paint. Wipe it off. And a little bit sporadically through here. So I'm not trying to make it too perfect. So lightly tap into some of the crevices. If you want to use a smaller brush for it, lightly tap into in between. Give it more of an indent and more shadow from the layering. So you, I don't mind going over that part of the, so this lighter part, it's going to go over, we're going to go over it again with white. So it's... Don't worry, it's all done kind of on purpose here. I'm just touching up on spot. Down here. Okay, so I think it's starting to take a bit more shape with a lot of this shadow and the depth that's going through it. So I don't need to wash this off. This is, um, if you wanna do this, you can do this. If you take some blue and a little bit of white, not too much white, kind of more of like that sky blue color. I don't mind that there's some purple on it because I used up most of my purple, but you can wash it off if it's going to bug you. Wiping off the paint again, so it's very lightly coated, and you can see there's little hints of blue. Just, um, I'm actually add a touch more white. 
something like this, wipe off the paint. And then lightly dab for a bit of color, extra color. And you can do, if you put it on top of right at the side here, if you put it on top of your red or purple, it kind of makes it look a bit more purple. Yeah, it does. It's just let it dry for a minute, but if I go over top, it just makes it a little bit more purple. And you can go a bit darker or lighter as needed. So if you're in a really dark area, just add a bit more blue. If you're in a lighter area, just add a bit more white. And just very, very little. If you put too much, I think it will overpower a bit too much and might not care for it too. Yeah. So down here, it's quite dark. Dab a bit more down here. And even though this is still a bit wet, the blue does blend on top of the purple, which helps assist in making it a bit more violet, deeper violet. If I go to a little bit of a lighter blue up here, it just adds a little bit more. More color. Okay, so we'll pull it back just a tiny bit. Texture is coming through. Haven't done that white to overlap here just yet, which I'm about to do. The edges should be fairly dry or just very softly damp, not nothing too crazy. And I think I'll use my flat medium brush. So remember, you can use white like me, or you can do uh, the peach again. So like I said, I'm going to take just white. You can take a little bit of your contaminated white that's touching peach if you're if you want, but. Ooh, just a little bit of that plain white and then lightly coat it. So this is a little bit of just playing around with it to our liking. Um, please, please don't put too much paint on. You will not get the same effect if you have a lot of paint. It helps when it's very lightly coated so that when I do the streak, you like that, it's very spaced. It's not consistent. It's a bit more transparent. And you can always follow and just create more interesting shapes. Instead of it all just being perfectly round, you can have a little bit more bumpy here, more bumpy here, a little bit out this way. And have fun with filling it in. Let some of the color show underneath it, which is why we didn't add too much paint on our brush. So if I kept it nice and soft, Rounded as I filled it in, see, I can see more of that fluffy look. And you know, sometimes that's not really our thing. And you can just change that by, um, for example, going back to my very large brush here, with not really any water on it. Still take a light amount of paint and just lightly tap around instead, instead of doing this kind of lacy look. Let me just show you the, a different type of way to, to do this. If I just lightly tap around here. You can get a different look than that up there. So I'm going to stick with 
that I showed you here. And the more layers you do or the more paint, of course, the, the thicker it's going to show and hide anything underneath it. I'm really just mimicking the shape of a heart here. It's kind of cute. So a little bit of paint at a time over here, just same type of thing. I'm just doing shorter streaks, making them soft, rounded. And I'm also just very lightly kind of tapping in towards this pink area. And also when it's doing that, it makes it naturally just look lighter as you go in. So if you want to, into the center, you can add a little bit more, even closer into the middle, provided it's dry. Like little dabs and swirls in here to give it even more layering within your cloud instead of, you know, some, some of them are inside the darker parts, layering it in. That gives it definitely a big boost. That's very little paint. You can't even barely see the white. Since I picked up some of my damp purple, I can wash this off and keep going to the other parts of my class. Wash it off. <clears throat> really dry it well. Take a light coating of white. So it's a light coating. But then pull off the paint even more. That's how important it is to, to do that. You can always add more white paint. It's really hard to take it away. And there's no, there's nothing wrong with wanting to do more layerings of white in certain spots. Maybe you want more white on, say, this part of your cloud. So you can, when you're doing it, you can just be a bit more heavy handed, put more white paint on there to get it sharper looking. Not sharper in like a physical sense. It's more just sharper as in it's got more stark white, more opaque, and it's more really outlined. You can see more of the edges where this is very kind of blurred and looks like it has more movement. So I'm wondering how it's going for us so far. Hopefully it's working well. And if you're looking to save this, there should be a save button on your YouTube somewhere along, I think, the left side. So now back down here. Now we can see more of the shape here when I go over it again. You can do extra layerings. You can do thicker white if it's necessary. It's very, very forgiving. And I think it's very easy to work with when you don't have a ton of paint on your brush. You can control how much you put on. And if you want to put more, you just add more of it. See how they're all very rounded here and then very lightly just dab over anything, add a little bit extra of the essence of this color. See, very light dabs or soft little curves.
And then from here, it's more about touching up to, again, how you like it. So let me just show you that if you have a premixed purple, you can, or just make your purple again, but I just wanna show you if you wanna use a premixed instead. You can use a premixed violet, probably is really nice. Just take a touch of it on any of your brushes that you wanna use, like a medium or a larger one. And just lightly tap over, um, just like a final time to get it really dark into these corners. So it can be, you can make a violet by taking two parts red, one part blue. Um, if you add white to it, you can, it will be a little bit lighter. But if you don't add white, you get more of a deep, deep color. A little bit more darkness here. Just very little paint. Touch up on any purples or pink, if you want more pink, like a hot pink. A little bit right here. or your blue, remember that blue? So that's just with some blue, if you prefer it more blue. But I think violet is great. Overall, I think violet is good. I'm just working on it very slowly to keep going on the deepness of color that I want to achieve overall. And you can stop at any point. You know, maybe you're in love with the way it is without having to add more color. And this is just, this is just white. So if you're looking to layer in, I mean, skip ahead if this is not something you want to do. You add a little bit of white on any of your round or flat brushes, whatever you've been working with. You can layer in a little bit more within some of your clouds. Like little dabs. It brightens it up. So before I start the stars and the moon, remember to grab something round and circular that you can trace around, make your life a lot easier. You can always touch up on things. You can blow dry this, come back to it, add another layer of say some white in certain spots because when it dries, maybe the transparency is lighter than you thought it was going to be and you want to darken or deepen some of the, the lightness that you put overall. So that is definitely an option. So remember that light blue, any light blue when it's dry, you can add in little streaks of it. Kind of like over here. So see if you if you like this, add it in. If not, leave it out. So sometimes since this 
kind of matches your background. It can look like there's, it's picking up some of that color overall, kind of peeking through. Now I'm going to my detailed brush. Let's put in the first coat of our moon because the first coat is always, you know, the more transparent one. You're gonna see a bit of the blue underneath. And if you keep trying to add more paint and water by putting in more coats when it's wet, it actually doesn't work in your favor either. I'm gonna use, I look at that, I have like the perfect, I'm gonna use just, I'm gonna trace around this. It seems like the perfect size. Might be a little bit bigger, but it doesn't matter because this is our painting. We can make it a super moon, we can make it small and tiny. If you have gold paint, add it in, add it into the moon um, after uh, as like a wash. So you just put it on top of everything when it's all solid and dry. Other, It's very transparent. So if you try to use it by itself, it doesn't work. Um, it's just shimmery. So white in a touch of Oops, a touch of yellow. So mostly white, a touch of yellow. And then the tiniest little dot of red, you get um, some more, just a little bit more of a golden color. See that? More golden looking. If it's too much, if it's too red, you'll see it's peach. Then otherwise add more white again and a touch of yellow to get it more onto the yellowy side. Okay. Touch of water this time. I know we've been lacking the water. So I'm just going to trace around very carefully. And now I'm going to make it a little bit thicker in the middle and keep it thin on the end. touch of water again, pick up my paint. So here it is thin, just like a light little touch to give it that thinness. And then just go press a bit harder, thicker here, as much as you want to do, right? This is just a really thin sliver of a moon. Back to thin here to Getting a little bit thicker, and the thickest part is like directly opposite of the open area. See how it's turning? You can probably, you don't tell, yeah, you can't really tell too much, but it's turning a bit greenish on me. It will with yours, even though this is dry. That's just normal. That's, you want to let it dry, blow dry it, do a second coat, and it will be good as gold. Literally, good as gold. Made a little bit thicker. Okay. So one little thing too, if you need to do this, maybe you point a little bit too much and you want to make it thinner up here. Don't worry. Blue will take care of it. Just slap on a good dark blue and thin it out. Just be careful that you're not doing too much of this, that you're making a bunch of green. You just go right here, go right up close to it, thin it out, whatever st uh, side is sticking out the most. So um, if it's going out a little bit too wide, just thin it out there and it will keep it nice and thin.
All right. So while that is drying, I am going to work on the stars. Yeah, that's what we want to do. Using our detail brush again. So the number zero is good. If you, I'm using a four and it's it's still very pointy, so I'm, I'm okay with it. Water and some white this time. Unless you want your stars to be, you know, golden. Let's pick, so for example, maybe I'll just pick this spot right here and take advantage of it. I'm going to go flick up, down, side to side, and then very little in the middle, like an X, and then taller on the plus sign. Oh, yeah, I will go closer for this step. Touch water, white paint. So I'll just do flick up down, side, side, like that. You can also give it more of a thickness in the center so that it's like an inner star within a star, so it's more rounded. It's like it's, you know, you're just going around making it a little bit thicker around there and then just leaving, don't touch the ends, just leave it to be thin. Let's do which is make a new star. Press, up, down, side, side. Then a mini X right through it. Not as long as I did the other ones. That gives it more of a glow. And then of course, just make sure it's solid in the middle. Another fun thing you can do with very little paint is on some of your stars, you can just pick one and just go kind of swirl outwards, swirl outwards. Let's go this one, swirl outwards, give it a bit of a glow. Swirl outwards. Remember that dry brush, hardly any paint, very lightly, just right on top of it, go out and spiral. It's the coolest thing. You can, if you're thinking, oh, this is great, you can just go crazy with it, but just a few is fine. Now for our distance, look at how they're glowing, some of them. Transparent paint, it looks like there's a light blue glow sitting around some of your stars. Go back to water and white paint again. I'm not using um, a very, very small amount. Just going around and so you can see they're all kind of facing more diagonally this way you don't have to do that but you can keep it fairly consistent if you want maybe i'll pick this one to be a little star so they're all not glowing the amount the same amount in every star some of them for example i'll make this one much bigger. So I'll go thicker overall. Just press and longer. Press down, side, side, and then an X. Thanks for joining me. We're almost done. We just have to do a couple things. Finish your stars. You can always do this afterwards. Take your time finishing up to your liking. A little X in here. You can blob a little bit more in the centers of your stars afterwards to give them more brightness in the very center. Okay, so my last one.
Okay, so I just added a few more stars too. And I'm gonna go over my last coat here and just give it a bit of gold. Or you could just um, take your gold. I'm gonna show you the gold actually. Gold. If I take a nice thick layer, straight gold. If you don't want that thick layer, you do a second coat and then you add the wash of the gold. You can do that. And the wash of the gold is just a little bit watered down gold and it just looks like a light shimmer on top of your yellowy color. This is just straight gold. And uh, if you have yellow ochre, but not gold, yellow ochre is pretty close to it. Let me show you. See, kind of looks like gold without the shine. Great. So that is Sweet Dreams, and hopefully this was fun, probably easier than you thought it was going to be. I know clouds for people are kind of a challenge when you're making certain types. Maybe this will inspire you for different types of clouds, and maybe when you want to put them in just a landscape, you can do a simple version of this, uh, keeping in mind the fluffy thing works nicely. So go to our Facebook page, Artist Palette Durham Region, and you can go under our groups and show off under our support group for painting and drawing um, your results. We look forward to seeing them, and maybe I'll see you at a, another event. I have another free one coming up on the 24th. It's like a Nightmare Before Christmas style. It's kind of fun. It looks, a, looks like a Van Gogh Starry Night, too. Pretty trendy. Bye, guys. Thanks for joining me.